let us now start with the individual emergencies and the most important abdominal oncological emergency is tiflitis. Tiflitis is also called as neutropenic enterocolitis because it is seen in neutropenic patients. There is inflammation of the intestine, particularly colon. It is a necrotizing colitis localized to cecum in majority of patients. So, cecum is important and it is seen in neutropenia. What are the conditions where tiflitis is seen? It is very frequently seen in acute leukemias, sometimes can occur in solid tumors as well. So, what are the pathogens which are implicated? Pseudomonas is a frequent pathogen, E. coli along with other gram-negative bacteria can also be seen. Then you have Staph aureus, alpha hemolytic streptococci, beta hemolytic streptococci also being present in some of the patients. Now, how does it happen? There is initially mucosal injury along with neutropenia. These are the two factors which combine to produce this problem. There is an extensive bacterial invasion and inflammation. It quickly spreads to full thickness or transmural inflammation. There can be perforation, peritonitis and septic shock. To understand it better, let us have a look at a flow chart. Look at this flow chart. So, whenever there will be cytotoxic chemotherapy given to the patient, there will be mucosal injury and neutropenia happening. Combination of the two will lead to impairment of host defenses. This will cause polymicrobial bowel translocation and invasion into the gut which will lead to transmural bowel inflammation and necrosis ultimately resulting in bowel perforation, bowel necrosis and septic shock in the patient. So, three sequelae happen because of this. Please remember all of these. There is either perforation of the bowel or there is necrosis of the bowel or there is release of inflammatory mediators and starting of cascade of septic shock in the patient. So, these are the three major causes of death in tiflitis. What is the common presentation that you find? There will be a patient with neutropenia who will present with sudden onset, acute onset, right lower quadrant pain. Right lower quadrant pain, when you examine there will be tenderness present, that is the hallmark of these patients. Clinical hallmark is right lower quadrant pain, acute onset. So, write the word acute onset as well. There may or may not be right lower abdominal mass. They, some of the patients, many of the patients are found to be febrile and the bowel sounds may be absent on auscultation. Patients may sometimes present with features of perforation and septic shock as well. Now, how will you confirm the diagnosis? Imaging needs to be done. When you perform x-ray, x-ray will show features of pneumatosis intestinalis that is air in the wall of small intestine. There will be bowel ball thickening or pneumoperitoneum. Pneumoperitoneum will indicate perforation in the patient. So, perforation will appear in the form of air under the diaphragm. Ultrasonography will show thickened bowel wall in the cecal region. Ultrasonography is often used as screening investigation in patients of tiflitis. Whereas, CT scan is considered to be the investigation of choice as well as most accurate investigation in tiflitis. CT scan will show diffuse thickening of the cecal wall and contrast CT is usually preferred over normal non-contrast CT scan. Barium anema will show the presence of severe mucosal irregularity, rigidity, loss of hostel, mar hostel markings and occasional fistula formation but barium anema these days is not done very frequently. Now this is a CT scan picture as you can see the, with the white highlighted arrow this is the thickened cecum which is present in this individual in which there is some hypodensity which can be seen and there is a definite enterocolitis like picture developing in the patient. So, this is the typical description of a CT scan showing a right sided cecal enlargement enterocolitis. Only looking at CT you cannot make the diagnosis. You can say you can make a differential diagnosis like thing. But when the question says neutropenic patient of leukemia started on chemotherapy, presents with sudden onset, lower abdominal pain on the right side and CT scan is shown below, the likely diagnosis, the, the only diagnosis which can be is tiflitis in the patient. So, how you are going to treat tiflitis? First is your medical management. You will put, make the patient NPO, start NG tube suction, IV fluids will be started. IV fluids, you, there are two approaches. In case the patient presents with shock, you will give bolus IV fluids. In case there is no shock, you will start the patient on maintenance fluids. Then you will start the patient on broad spectrum IV antibiotics. In broad spectrum IV antibiotics, it should cover gram positive bacteria, gram negative bacteria as well as anaerobes. This is very important. And when you cover these gram negative bacteria, in addition, you know that pseudomonas is common. 
pseudomonal coverage is also recommended. So there are various types of antibiotic regimes that are useful. Some of the places they use a combination of ceftriaxon with amikacin with metronidazole. Other places use a combination of cefoperazone with amikacin with metronidazole. There is a third regime which is becoming popular. We use a combination of vancomycin with meropenem. Vanco uh, meropenem has both coverage of anaerobes also and it has some pseudomonal activity. In case there is a strong suspicion of resistant pseudomonal species, then two anti-pseudomonal drugs of different classes can be combined in the patient. So, various types of regimes are available, the, but the rule is it should cover the maximum possible organisms. There should be positive and negative coverage. There should be pseudomonal coverage, at least in one, ideally two antibiotics should cover that and anaerobic coverage should also be given. Then uh, vasopressors and transfusions will be needed. GCSF transfusion, although some of the books talk about it, they can be considered, but they are not very effective in acute patients. And surgical indications will include there is persistent GI bleeding in the patient, there is perforation in the patient, you need to do surgery and bowel infarction with clinical deterioration, the infected necrosed part will need to be removed. When you do surgery, we do a resection of the segment, of the involved segment followed by colostomy. Primary repair is not performed, uh, late stage repair is done but again recurrences as well as strictures and fistula formation are the known complications. So this is regarding tiflitis. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.